Hi everybody, I'm here at the LA Mission and I'm here with Herb Smith who's the president of CEO. Yes. Um, as many of you have been following, I started to do some videos here for Huffington Post on Skid Row and the LA Mission has been very gracious. So today I'm going to get a tour, but I, I wanted to interview the top guy on Tell me about the LA Mission. Well, the LA Mission has been around for about 77 years, uh, serving the community. Uh, over those 77 years, we've seen homelessness change, the needs change, and uh, we've tried to change with that. But fundamentally, we're here to help people. And uh, whatever those specific needs might be, whether they're uh, housing for the homeless initially, or whether they're programs, drug and alcohol challenges, domestic violence for their women in our Ann Douglas Center, all sorts of different functions that we we play here in Skid Row, along with the emergency meals and overnight beds that many people think about. Right. Um, it's a big facility. How many people sleep here every night? How many people eat here every day? The facility here is about 156,000 square feet. We call it a convention center because people live, sleep, eat, have activities and everything. But in all of our properties are about 450 beds. 180 emergency overnight beds for men. The rest of them are in programmatic right. uh, transition, work start, uh, fresh start, jump start. Um, type programs that are helping them get back on their feet and ultimately uh, back into housing or back with reunited with families issues that uh, might have challenged them in the beginning. Wow. Um, I've been very impressed uh, hanging out with John Kelly who I interviewed and there'll be a link uh, to that interview and the other stuff that uh, um, and from what some of the people that are out on the street have said is very encouraging about your work. Great. Um, uh, what has changed? What's changed in homelessness and what's changed in Skid Row? Well, I think there are a lot of changes. Um, over the years, we've seen the introduction of drugs, drugs and alcohol challenges, mental health is a current huge issue within the population. Uh, we're seeing some focus change. Uh, right now, there's a lot of focus on the housing first, uh, housing the chronic homeless, uh, which are a portion of the overall homeless population, but not all. Right. And so uh, our goal is to try to focus on little bits and pieces of that continuum and the, the way that we can serve and then also support others. So right. one of the things that I'm excited about with John is he's an alumni and he's been able to bring a, a number of our program right. alumni together to help uh, outreach to the community, right. to help with placement, to help with uh, other resourcing, and uh, who better than someone who's been there before right. to help give direction to others. And so I'm excited in what we call our uh, Mission Without Walls concept, uh -huh. that it doesn't all have to happen here at Fifth and Wall in a building, right. but the needs of people are out on the street and throughout the community and across Los Angeles, and that's what our vision is, is to help get those people back into housing and appropriate services and, and as independently living as possible, as much as they can do. I, uh, from John, John talked about uh, a lot of the services and, and organizations down here networking together and trying mm -hmm. to work together. That, well, yes, um, I'm the president of the Los Angeles Central Providers Collaborative, and that's an honor. Uh, that's about 17 or 18 organizations that have come together in, in years past, and we basically are here to look at the issues, to provide information, to try to collaborate more. When I came here about seven years ago, I, I was introduced to the organization, but didn't find it particularly collaborative. And uh, so my personal goal was to right. say, well, we need to work together. This project and this issue right. is much bigger than any one of our single agencies, any even uh, government, politics, etc. And how can we look at what we all do, bring our own philosophies and challenges right. and backgrounds to the table, because one size does not fit all in homelessness. Yeah. And we, we do that and we, we focus on end goals and information exchange. So we've done the Downtown Pathways Home Project, which was focusing on uh, outreach to the chronically homeless, the most vulnerable, to try to get them in housing. We're working with uh, LASA and the uh, federal government now on a project for consolidated entry system here in, in right. Skid Row. So those are new things for us. They're yeah. a, little, a little uncomfortable perhaps for yeah. some, but uh, if it helps support. get someone the services that they need and the support that right. they need, and then we can do a better job of providing that at the back end or for others that uh, don't need that but need a program right. and then back to regular you know, transitional housing, then that's what we're here to do. So. 
That's uh, my goal. It, 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 for those of you that have been following me, this is uh, a repeat, but uh, you know, part of my song and dance is exactly what Herb said, is that we have to work together. This is way bigger than any one organization, any one person. And, you know, we might not all sit and sing Kumbaya, but, you know, we have to uh, pool our resources, forget our differences, and work together. And that's, I'm really excited about the coordinated entry that's, mm -hmm. that's happening around. Uh, it's going to be, uh, uh, I think, a real benefit. And at, 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 at a minimum, one of the things that it does is forces everybody to talk to each other. Yes. And that's really great. And now, I think it addresses some of the, the challenges that we all face and see, but in a more unified way. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I like to say we celebrate our differences. Yeah. That is, we all like come that. at things from a different perspective. And that doesn't mean we jettison right. that in the process. But what might work for one doesn't necessarily work for someone else. Exactly, exactly. And a lot of the buzz is around housing first. But the shelter model is also very important to yeah. augment. And a lot of people aren't getting that. They're just yes. hearing the housing first buzz, the housing first buzz. And, and that, yes, that's really cool for this one population. But the shelter model, you just don't throw it away either because that's very important to serve the household. Well, no, because the shelter model helps as a first resource. It's, it's kind of like going to the clinic instead of the ER. Right. The cost and the resources available. Um, we're ultimately trying to get people housed, but not everybody needs permanent supportive housing, which right. is our most you know, costly exactly. resource. Many of them just need permanent housing. Many of them need uh, programmatic challenges right. to be able to get back in housing. So it's all those pieces that get people off the street. Yeah. How can people support LA Mission? Well, I think obviously the uh, easiest way is to write a check, right. but many people aren't able to do that. And we encourage them to follow us on our website and on our Facebook. Um, we have uh, gift and kind opportunities for our event uh, coming up next week. We're doing chocolate Easter bunnies. And we yeah. have people all over the, uh, Los Angeles sending us chocolate Easter bunnies to the I street. I think that's great. Street. Um, but, and also volunteer, come down. You know, I'd like to tell people, come down and see what we do. Right. The best kept secret is the Los Angeles mission because most people think, you know, we serve the homeless, those dirty old people on the street and maybe we give them a bed and a meal and that's about it. Yeah. But they need to see all the other services that we have available yeah. to help get people back on their feet off the street and into housing and a permanent life. You bring up a good point and I'm going to close with this. It's actually through the wonderful girl that does your social media because I have driven by here and walked by here. But when I was looking to do the Huffington Post story, we connected and uh, here I am interviewing you and, and it's been great. So thank you very much for your time and thank you everybody.